Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing what I'm going to be redoing, probably the hardest lab report I've ever gotten in all my time in chemistry, which is you're given five unknown organic compounds and you're given a proton NMR spectrum, an IR spectra, and a mass spectra of each and you're given a little bit of extra information, whether that be combustion analysis, uh, data information, or uh, some other stuff. Um, so what we're going to be doing, we're only going to be doing unknowns A and B. Um, here's the spectra data for A. Pause the video now if you want to copy it down. And here's the spectra for information B, for unknown B. Alright, now that you should have those, pause the video now if you want to try um, for both of them and come back when you have the um, answers. Alright, so presumably you're back. So the first thing I want to do is break down the mass spectrum. So right away we are told that the empirical formula is C3H6O2 and the our molecular ion peak is at 74. So we know that the molecular mass of the compound is 74 and um, we know the empirical formula. Now, straight away, what jumps out is this peak at 45 and this peak at about around 29. Now, there's a peak at 29 and there's a peak at 28. Um, this is interesting, right? So let's sort of, we can add up, we can, since we have a molecular formula, we can tally up things that add up to 28 or 29. So I know that 29 is in the data booklet. The mass of, a mass fragment of 29 is in fact in the data booklet and the mass fragment of 45 is also in the data booklet. So straight away, we should be able to use that. So a four, so the peak at 45 here, 45 corresponds to a COOH group. And that information does match the fact that, you know, there is a, um, you know, there is two oxygen in, in the thing, in the atom. So that's in the molecule, so that's fine. And there's this peak at 29, which in our data booklet is given as uh, CH3CH2 or alternatively CHO. But since we have two oxygens in the formula, it's unlikely it would be that one. Um, but we should consider this one here. Uh, lastly, uh, there are no peaks at 15 to really speak of, and there do appear to be differences. So if our molecular ion peak is 74, take away 15 from that, we should be seeing peaks at about 59. And we don't see any peaks at 59, um, so um, there are no methyl groups that, well, I guess here that counts as a methyl group, but there are no methyl fragments to really look at. There are some other peaks here, but it was the peaks at well, 45 and around here. The reason I identified this peak is because I know that's a carboxylic acid. And then here, this peak is extremely high. So therefore, um, there needed to be a bit of investigation. Some of these other things here, maybe hydrogens falling off or different isotopes or whatever. But this frag, this section here cannot be ignored. Now, if we look at the um, if we look at the IR data, we notice bands at, so let's sort of, um, let's sort of pile up all our IR data here. So let's sort of pile up our mass. I R data, and there's not much I R data we can really pick off here. Um, there's not really much we can pick off from I R, and then we have N M R. But what you can pick off is pretty important. So straight away, if we look here, I can identify a band, a really strong wide band, um, that really has a dip at about three thousand. So I'm gonna note that three thousand there a really strong wide band here at about 3000 and I also note this band here at 
about what looks to be a 1720. So, the band at 1720, let's go, the band at 1720 indicates a C double O bond, and this really strong wide band at about, um, you know, 3000 or so. Um, it really does go from about it starts off at about what that would what would that be 2100 and it really doesn't stop till about 3600 so that is typical of you know 2500 to 30,000 is indicative of hydrogen bonding in carboxylic acids and it's also indicative of hydrogen bonding in alcohols and phenols so they're both indicating O H bonds. Lastly, if we consider the proton NMR, there is a shift. So one, there is a one point, looks to be one point one ish, integrates to, well, we don't know what it integrates to, but well, we can identify that it's 1.1 for the higher levels. We can clearly see here that that looks to be about a uh, that looks to be about a triplet. So that integrates to three, and then here we have a quartet at about 2. Uh, 2.25, 2, 5, 2, and triplet quartet. And then lastly, we have a singlet at about, that looks to be 11 point, point, 11 point seven ish, integrates to one, and the tr singlet, let's say, singlet, singlet. So that is all the data we can pull off. Now, if we look at our proton NMR shift booklets, um, this is now the thing with proton MR is not it's not the, the shifts aren't always uh, 1.1 or in that range sometimes they can be a little bit above or below the range um, so what we can see here so we can see here that this would probably this indicates CH3 CH3s CH2s or whatever we can see here that this peak at 2.25, so if I look here at 2.2, indicates our, let's see, a double bonded O, CH2, and so on. And then a peak at 11.7 is typically indicative of this, um, This here indicates, so based off the other data, we can see that a carboxylic acid, which is what we were suspecting initially, has peaks, this would correspond, in our data booklet, that corresponds to a peak of nine to 13, so perfectly in the range for R, C, O, O, H. So based off our data, I can conclude that this is probably the structure, CH3, CH two C O O H, and here we have a methyl which is about one point one, which corresponds to a triplet, uh, which is a triplet, which indicates that triplet is three minus one indicates that there are two hydrogens in the neighboring environment for those higher levels. This quartet here, four minus one is three. This is the quartet, and that corresponds to this triplet group, or this triple hydrogen, the three hydrogens in this neighboring environment. This is the peak at 1.1, this is the peak at 2.2, and then here is the peak at 11.7. That hydrogen is on its own environment. These two are in the same environment, and those three are in the same environment. So based off all that evidence and all the other analysis, I'm able to conclude that there is a carboxylic acid. Now, how did I get there, you might ask? Um, the, the key is, is that with these sorts of, you know, analytical chemistry is all about, it's really a puzzle. And you can figure out the puzzle pieces, but you have to, you know, to solve the puzzle, you have to put all the pieces in the right order. Now, 
we went through each spectrum. What I did is I went through each spectrum one by one and I noticed either peaks or, and I looked at peaks and I looked at what those peaks can correspond to. And I was also given other clues as to what may it be. I was also given the empirical formula, which obviously is very helpful and this sort of uh, analysis, which that is really a helpful tool, you know, that's really a helpful tool that you can get the empirical formula. Uh, and that's really a helpful tool um, in your analysis. But the key here is that you want to combine, you want to use all your puzzle pieces and just keep trying to fit them together until you get to the answer. So with that, let's try um, spectrum B. Which is race. So to give myself a little bit more room here, because the last one was kind of crowded, I'm only going to have this in like a small window, right? And I have my data booklet beside me. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to move this to the other, um, the other screen, my other screen here. So let's let's get a start. Let's get started. So mass mass spectrum. I R other and you can make a chart like this if you really want so here I have mass spectrum IR data other data and NMR and straight away from the other data I can know that H four O M empirical and the molecular ion peak is at eighty eight. So M R equals eighty eight. And since I have the empirical formula, I'll take the mass of the empirical formula and see how many times it divides through into the MR, which so twenty four, twenty eight. 8 plus 6 is 34, and then 44. So since the empirical formula's mass is 44, um, there's two molecular formulas. So the molecular, just by doing that, I now know the molecular formula is C4H8O2. So what I did there was I took the mass of the empirical formula, divided the molecular mass by the empirical mass to see how many empirical formula units make up the molecule, and I got two of them make it up. So the molecular formula is C4H8O2. Now peaks that really jump out to me are there is a peak here at what looks to be 58. So 58. There also seems to be a peak at 29. So 29 and then 15. So I know the 15 is going to correspond to a CH3, and I know the 29 will either correspond to CH2, uh, CH3, or CHO. This mass here, fragment at 58, is interesting since I don't know what it corresponds to necessarily. Um, the difference is 30, which doesn't really ring a bell, um, but it also doesn't really it doesn't ring a bell. So if we add some numbers up, we know that, okay, so C2H5, let's add two oxygens. So we know that that's 29. So 29 plus 16 yields us 1545. Nope. Let's do, um, all right. Actually, we'll come back to this mass fragment at 58, but it's good to know that we have some possibilities as to what it might be. Now let's look at our IR data. So according to my IR data, I have a band at 3000. I have a band at what looks to be 1720 again. And yeah, there looks to be a band at about 1720, and that's about the only bands I can pick. And from our last one, we know that that's indicated that there's a CO bond. And then this peak at 3000, according to our data booklet, 
according to our data booklet, peaks at 3,000. Um, uh, indicative of carboxylic acids, but given the last one is a carboxylic acid, I'm not too keen on that one. Um, it's also indicative of you know C H bonds, O H bonds, but generally the hydrox hydrogen bonding is quite broad. Whereas the one that we just saw for compound B was quite slim. So that is some, um, that's that. Now, if we go back to our mass spectrum data, okay, there must be something with a C double O bond. So that may be helpful. Um, the only other thing I can consider would be an ester. So let's, let's consider that ester. Let's consider since the molecular formula is C4H8O2, let's consider, um, so we know 45, 44 would equal COO, and adding, you know, a methyl group onto that, for instance, so 15 would yield us COOCH3, which that's possible. Um, that, could, that yields 59, but okay, fine. Let's, so that yields 59, um, which is certainly a peak, but the big peak was actually at 57. So, okay, go back to the drawing board a little bit. Um, nothing yields to me at 57. So, yeah, it should be 57. 57, but let's put a question mark there. All right, so now let's go to the NMR data, which corresponds we have a we have a um, well let's see so we have a peak at 1.1 1. 1. that looks to be a one two three triplet and I am told the triplet integrates to three uh, there's a peak at about 2.2, 2, that's a quartet, it looks like, which just gives information about the neighboring environments, and the quartet, I'm told, integrates to 2, and then there's a peak at 3.6, 3.6, which looks to be a singlet, which integrates to all right this is very interesting the peak at 1.1 if I you know go into my data booklet let's look at our data booklet here this could be this indicates to about CH3 uh, this 2.2 here typically corresponds to as we just saw and I, where is my thing? Where's my mouse? R, C, C double bonded to O, C, H, 2, and so on. And then the 3.6 integrates to R, O, C, double bonded O, C, H, 2, and so on and so forth. Now, this is very interesting because it matches with this. Um, it matches with our IR. We have mass spectrum data, which clearly lines up that there's a CH3 group. We know that there are C double O bonds, and it's clearly showing the shape of an ester. So, let's draw an ester. So, CH2, CH3. O, O, and then there must be, so we have five and we are CH3. And this yields a molecular formula of C4H8O2, which we do have. And clearly I was right that it's probably an ester. So we draw, we draw out an ester and check to see if that matches with the data. 
So here you have a methyl group, it's a triplet, it's neighboring environment. There are no neighboring environments in the vicinity of this uh, uh, singlet, and there's and it clearly would integrate to three since there are three hydrogens here. If we take a look at this uh, uh, quartet here, this would correspond to the quartet, 2.2, there's two hydrogens here and it integrates to two. And then the 1.1 here, this has you know three hydrogens in it. It's a triplet, which indicates that there are two neighboring environments. So I'm confident to say that this is an ester. And that's our answer. So like I said, what I did was I used my clues that I was given and I tried to, you know, match the puzzle pieces together. Thankfully, you know, my teacher was really nice with the first couple of them and it's pretty easy to see. They were not too bad with the spectrum, but if we go to compound E, for instance, um, I don't know if I'll leave this lab in the description. I probably won't, but going to compound E, we're given the empirical formula C4H9NO. There is a peak at 87. The IR data is nasty. And there's some a bunch of other stuff that we are um, it was really it was much nastier I'll say that much so thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe.